Thank you all for coming. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm actually going to be talking about the study that we have conducted, or rather we, have, uh, we are conducting and we're in the process of finishing, along with Bharatiya Muslim Mahila Andolan, ORF has been trying to document and study the efforts of and initiatives of Indian Muslim women. Basically, I, um, we feel that only when the Sachar Committee report came out did the entire country know or became knowledgeable about the plight or the conditions of the one of India's largest minority community. We all know the level of um, we all know that the level of education, of health, of poverty, standard of living, access to livelihood, in general, living conditions of Muslims is fairly uh, relatively poorer than. Um, a lot of the other communities. And amongst them, the status of Indian Muslim women, as you can see, especially the literacy rates and participation in workforce, is particularly low. So hence, we, feel that we felt that a study was important, especially because um, we need to know what has been constructively achieved, especially since Achar, and not only that, but since the past 20 years. And why do we feel that it's important? Because as we've written, the welfare and development of the Muslim women should be the concern of the whole country, and not only of Muslims. And basically, up until now, we feel that Muslim women have been constrained. And they've constrained not only because of their religion, but also because they are women. And that is sort of like a double oppression. Besides that, the events of the 90s, in general, have um, turned a lot of Muslim more towards religion and taken it on with more veracity. And the women have borne the brunt of this. A lot of the efforts, a lot of the studies up until now have been concentrated more so on religion and on their legal rights. There's very limited um, focus on socioeconomic development. And believe me, we've been seeing that because we've been conducting the study and trying to look at studies, trying to look at efforts, trying to look at documentation of NGOs, which we haven't found a lot. And so we feel that this is important because we need to sort of com um, recognize their efforts. We need to provide them with a voice and support their endeavors. So what have we done? Um, basically, the focus of the study is we're going to document the Indian Muslim women's movement, especially focusing on socioeconomic issues. We are, we are trying to see the challenges faced by them as they enter public life, and they try to sort of address their own marginalization. And most importantly, we want to see the role of various actors, of Muslims, of NGOs, of civil societies, of the government, of you and me, to support them. Our research is basically going to be fo was focused and is being focused on Muslim women working predominantly on socioeconomic issues for Muslim women and for the community. Uh, we have looked at organizations in states or territories, 12 in 12 states or territories, and we have, besides conducting case studies of nonprofit organizations, we've also conducted expert interviews uh, with persons well versed with issues affecting women and uh, Muslim women and NGOs. So why a qualitative study? When we started out, we had many questions between qualitative versus quantitative. But basically, we feel that statistics don't give justice to the sheer scale of the problem. And we wanted to hear everything they had to say about the government schemes, about their organization, about their activities, perceptions, challenges faced, about their history. We just, want, we just felt that a qualitative study would get so much farther than a quantitative one, more than the numbers could tell us and hence it was the need of the R. Our preliminary findings, this is not conclusive because it's still ongoing and we're still dec deciphering information, we're still getting information, but what we have noted is that besides being a very closed society, um, it's not a homogenous, we cannot call it a Muslim community because there are very different and diverse voices within amongst Muslims. Um, we noticed that amongst Muslims they are not particularly supportive of women's rights, about empowerment, um, especially suppression of education. A lot of times we've seen that um, women are educated till probably 12th grade or they're educated up to their bachelor's education. Men are given more preference in these arenas. The Muslim elite, women in the Mus amongst the Muslim elite, they have, um, they have joined public life. They have, they have jobs in public life, but this makes up a very small percentage. Amongst the NGOs, we noticed funding. Funding was a big issue for a lot of the organization working on socioeconomic issues. Um, and um, funding, funding was a big issue. A um, lot of the organizations 
got some zakat, uh, were getting private donations. Very few of them got zakat money, some from the international organizations. Uh, government schemes, government schemes also, there was uh, a, a lot of uh, problems in terms of level of awareness, um, lack of outreach capabilities, um, capab or rather eligibility of the government scheme to reach the Muslim women. And a lot of times it was felt that um, the nodal agencies or the um, international organization were giving preference to certain issues ra and uh, bypassing others. Um, we also noticed that predominantly the activities amongst a lot of these Muslim women organizations, this is for the positive, they were focused on education, on family counseling, on vocational training, and uh, basic livelihoods. Uh, recommendations, they came, so the recommendations, these came from the non-profit organizations, which is data, information on Muslim women. Um, none of this, none of it is possible if we don't have data. We cannot track their progress if we don't know their socioeconomic pro, uh, level in terms of education, in terms of employment, standard of living, health, access to finance. Uh, the, the other thing was schemes, targeted schemes. That is what is needed towards addressing a lot of the socioeconomic issues. Um, and policies must be made more facilitatory, policies must be more facility, facilitatory <laughs> to, um, to address these issues. Dissemination of information, as we said, lack of awareness was an issue, so information about the schemes need to be disseminated to all the nonprofits, all the, all the Muslim women trying to avail of these schemes. Another thing is, we've noticed that a lot of Muslims, they, especially women, are skilled artisans and craftsmen. So we felt that a lot of these industries working from home, all these initiatives need to be promoted. One of the biggest issues we faced was education. Education, and everybody said education is very, very important. And women, not only women, but also men, education is very important of the community, especially when we talk about male sensitization, because this is number one. Unless and until the male, uh, unless and until we do not have male sensitization to this issue, none of the other objectives are possible. Thank you.